Hey everybody, what's going on out there? Let's bring Monica on. Monica, how are you? Hey, what's going on? Oh, she can't hear me yet. Hello. I want to say hi to Craig out there from behind the garage and Scott and Steven and Jacqueline. Steven, Steven made that behind me. That guy rocks, man. Oh, our guest tonight, she's awesome, Monica. Jill. I can't wait. Oh, she's so cool. I wanted to say hi to Cheryl out there, grilling and chilling with Coleman. Man, we got uh, we got a good lineup here tonight so far. Yeah. You guys are going to love tonight's show. Almost every one of you know her anyways. Uh, uh, it's Jill from Yester Kitchen. She makes some of the coolest stuff. Like She and I kind of go back and forth online talking about the stuff. And uh, I'm going to show her page while we're doing this. And that way you guys can kind of get a, a view of, of who she is. Everybody knows Jill from Yester Kitchen, right? So uh, tonight, no white Russian cam. I can't Sorry. wait. <laughs> we got the hot, hot buttered rum cam. Although I wasn't smart enough to change it, so the name of it. But she made a hot buttered rum that ooh looks so good. Oh, my goodness. So I'm making one tonight. May have already had one, too. And then this one here was a blast from the past right here. Potatoes Delmonico. Oh, my gosh. So badly. Want I so want to talk to her about it. All right, guys. Are you ready to, to talk with uh, Jill? Because I know I am. Woo -woo. Let's do it. And there she is. Jill, what is going on, my friend? Hi, I'm just living the dream. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Jill, this is Monica. Monica, Hi. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you. So um, before we get started, it is time for the white Russian cam, the AKA hot buttered rum cam. So hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna have to, we're gonna have to come up with a, a little jingle every time we do the Russian the yeah, white Russian cam. <laughs> there you go. Do, 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 do. I already got some hot water, guys. And um, Jill, I apologize for I don't unfortunately have I didn't have the time to make it like Jill did. Bad <laughs> because that looks awful. But uh, this is hot water. But, uh, oh, but so it, uh, good. <laughs> and Jill and I were talking earlier in the day, and I'm going with Malibu rum. I don't know if you can see that. Mm, I and love that. I do too. And I tell you what, it was good. It's so different. I can't wait to like hear how that tastes. I would never put coconut, but I love okay. coconut. Yeah. Put a little whiskey in this one too. Yeah. Because I like to live dangerous. Because it's five thirty somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> Just not here. That's probably enough for right now. Maybe later. And a blast from the past. I'm using half and half. My grandparents always use half and half. In there. Way to go. Yeah. There you go, guys. Yum. And uh, let's go back to the normal cam and see my ugly mug. <laughs> so is that what they is that what they um, put in uh, when you see Tom and Jerry's mix? Is that what they put in to the hot butter drum? Or what's Tom and Jerry's? Tom and Jerry's completely different. That's like a batter. That so it's um, not it's, a drink at all. Oh, it's a drink. Oh, it's it a drink. drink. It's um, it's actually um, with a lot of cream, ice cream. You actually serve it in big bowls. You make for like enough for twenty. It's very popular during the Christmas season. So kind of like right now. Actually, I was going back and forth between doing a Tom Jerry or doing hot buttered rum. But Tom and Jerry is so involved, and I figured hot buttered rum so good. Mm -hmm. Although I do have my trademark martini. Right. <laughs> Joe, what are you drinking? <laughs> Dirty martini. Always. Nice. Good for you. <laughs> you don't stray at all? Dirty no, I do. I do. I um I love bourbon. So I've we've gotten it. I'm I'm big on old fashions um or any kind of bourbon drink. Um vodka, pretty much anything. Okay. But um actually I just don't like I don't like beer. Other than that, I know. I know. Other than that, I'm I love it all. I just got into mezcal too. Okay. Yeah, that's the tequila, right? It's it it is. It's like a very smoky tequila. Yes, I've had uh, I had a bad experience on tequila once. It lasted well, about six years, and then I went back to drinking it. So. <laughs> I was going to say try mezcal because it, I had a bad tequila experience too, and mezcal is just <laughs> different enough. 
Hey, Chris oh. just joined us. Chris from Oh, uh, yep. East Show's Wind. over, guys. We'll see you. Chris is here from East Wind Farms. <laughs> you know, it was good talking to you. We'll see you later. You know. <laughs> Chris is one of those characters out there, uh, Jill, that I was talking about. It's like, so awesome. Yeah, so, it, I like the, grilling and chilling wants to know what was the first thing you put in the drink. Was it hot water? It was hot water, and then it was the uh, hot buttered rum mix. Okay, gotcha. Store bought, not Jill made. Which is so easy to make. <laughs> maybe next, you know what? Well, I we don't have a guest next weekend, so maybe I'll just do it live, make it live or something. Do it. There you go. There you go. All right. Can I can I say hi to Cheryl really quick? She's out there. She's been with me since the beginning of my channel, and I saw her go by. So hi, Cheryl. I'm so happy. Cheryl. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl, for showing up. We really appreciate it. Cheryl Agnew. All right. Cheers to Cheryl. See, and I yes. got a Halloween. Cheers to Cheryl. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's like hold a lot. Hey, Steve. Steve. Oh, there's a. Oh, somebody else for you. Hey. Roberta Woods. All Hi, right. Roberta. Welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Oh, Roberta's out there. Hi, Roberta. <laughs> <laughs> and never say never says hi jill yeah. everyone's saying hi hi <laughs> we really appreciate you guys showing up thank you for All being right. here jill first question where are you from i was born in hollywood and i grew up in la um i actually grew up in outside of la in an area known as the valley which okay. if you've heard of valley girls no nope. um uh, Sherman Oaks, and Encino, like Encino, Tarzana. Yeah, so that's the valley. And I kind of, that was my formative years. And I was actually one of the original valley girls back in the that 80s. Explains a lot. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I dressed the part. I talked the part. So, um, nice. that's, yeah, so that's how I grew up. And um, didn't get very far. <laughs> I live about, about 45 really minutes far, outside now. I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I haven't said anything yet, but it's no, totally fine. No. I'm moving hey, to Idaho. Yeah. Oh, everybody else is. Why not? Why not? Oh, I'm very excited. Very Jill, excited. you got Jill, you got any animals? No. We um I had a rabbit who was okay. the most bomb rabbit on the planet. He lived to about 13. Whoa. His name was Bandicoo. He would lay on his back in your lap for hours and just the biggest sweetheart. And we lost him just about a year oh. ago. Oh no! Yeah, it was hard. So um, we're now talking dog, <laughs> but it's at the like moment, a, it's if you're going to be in Idaho, you almost have to have a dog. That's what I hear. So um, yeah, we're we're talking. So right now, there's no pets. There's no kids. It's just us. Damn! How do I get that job? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're moving to Idaho before they could come back. <laughs> no, That's I love my kids. I have the most amazing kids. Uh, Jill, tell us a little bit about your channel. Wow. Okay. So I started Yester Kitchen about two years ago. My brain lives in the past. And I absolutely love the 40s to the 80s. And I have been studying food history pretty much all my life. And so I really wanted to start a channel, but I was always terrified. Like literally 15 years ago, I wanted to start this. And I should have, hindsight. But um, a couple years ago, my... Um, the baby moved out, went to college, and I thought, well, what am I going to do now? And so that's kind of got the kick in the butt to start it. And so it's all about dishes from the 40s to the 80s. I most of the time talk about where these dishes come from, um, the stories behind. I'm big on the stories behind the dishes because they had to come from somewhere. And so Love those... Those are the stories I tell. And I love, love, love that so many times I get comments on my videos from people that went, oh, my God, my mom made this. My grandma made this. I haven't thought about this since I saw your video. And so it's turned into just a channel of like sparking so many childhood memories. And my heart is just full every time I get a comment saying, you know, this is or this is how we made it, you know, or whatever. And so it's just, it's really all about the past. I, I don't make anything current. I don't make keto. I don't make low fat. I don't make anything but the real, authentic, full fat, real recipes. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. 
butter makes oh. everything better. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it does. Always. And I use a lot and of butter. Do you use a lot of evaporated milk? <laughs> I do, and shortening. And yeah, we have a grand old time. <laughs> <laughs> do you save all your fat, like from, you know, when you fry meats and then use it to fry like potatoes? And <laughs> I do bake and grease sometimes, but. Um, yeah, I mean, like it all—it it all depends on what the recipe calls for because I really try to stay true to the original recipe. I don't—I don't change a thing, and so I mean, a lot of times I get comments like, you know, that's ah, too fattening. I'm like, well, pff, I don't think you understand my channel. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love that, Roberta well, Woods. Go butter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yes. <laughs> true. We're team butter here. Here's yes. the butter. Well, Green sorry. butter and Crisco right there. Right. <laughs> Jill. Cheers. Did you, did you cook with your parents and grandparents when you were, were a kid? Um, did I grow up with them? No, did you cook with them? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I cooked with my mom all the time. She was a great cook and um, is a great cook. And um, I just started cooking since I was like, as long as I could remember. And just something about cooking is just, it's just Zen to me. It's just, it's just such, I know so many people hate cooking. I love cooking every night. I cook dinner from scratch, even though it's just me and my husband, I can't wait to get down to the kitchen and start planning and cooking. And um, it always involves jazz and wine. Um, but I <laughs> see, I, see I, I go off on tangents. So um, just like my show. Welcome to the tangent channel, Jill. <laughs> So, but yes, I have been cooking forever and I just, it's, it's just, it, I actually have been a cooking school and I, I'm not a certified chef because I knew I didn't want to work in a restaurant because I kind of value my nights and weekends and they don't get paid a lot. So I didn't take the business classes or the health classes or the things you really need to actually get certified, but I took all, all the classes I wanted to take. So I'm pretty versed in cooking um except my knife skills need help but that's okay (laughs) (laughs) jill what was your favorite dish when you were a kid wow (laughs) honestly (laughs) us if you want i don't care chef boyer d beef ravioli in a can (laughs) yes so awesome to this day is it not (laughs) yeah Every once in a while, I pass it in the market. I'm like, I really, no, 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 I'm not going <laughs> to. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Uh, oh, thank I you, heard. Roberta, so much. <laughs> uh, what is your earliest memory of cooking? Wow. Um, I'm a hard hitter. Come on. That's okay. i got answers. If a um, chef IRD, you are my hero. <laughs> it was actually probably um, just my mother would cook every night. Just you know, not no shortcuts. She would cook every night, and so I would be there in with be there in with her, um, which is probably why I love the seventies so much. I mean, if you see my channel, I'm I do a lot of seventies, and so it's just those those memories that go back to you know the, the full fat dinners, and but not just that. It's just like they were more. Um, they were more hearty. They were more, they weren't quick. You know, they took their time. They tasted so yeah. good. You, you, you smelled the, you know, you smelled dinner cooking while you were doing your homework in the other room. Right. You know? Or right. outside playing, you know. Or, and yeah, you can't, you had to come home when the street lights came on. Right. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, no um, nothing. Like, right. Facebook. What is that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was an awesome, awesome time. Well, I'm a girl. I didn't get dirty. Oh. <laughs> But that's okay. You're supposed to. Many times. I remember my parent, my mom. You're going right to the shower, young man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, what is your favorite memory of cooking? Wow. Chef Boyardee. I'm just, you know. Hashtag you know chef. what? The first, <laughs> the first dish I ever came up with is probably a, it. I called it pioneer stew. I don't know why I took beef broth in a pot and put in beef jerky and let it Ooh. simmer for a while. And then I would pour it in a bowl. I was like a little kid and put potato chips on top. It was, cool. you know what? I haven't thought about that in years. I think I'm going to make some. You and should. I added something else that I don't remember, but that's like, 
<laughs> when you just when you just said that, that just sparked in my head. God, I remember that Pioneer Stew. And so, yeah. <laughs> that's cool, actually. That really does. It's, I, I make up recipes to this day all the time. Do you? Yeah. I never, I never use, unless I'm doing my show, I never use recipes. Well, let's talk about that. When, you, when you're doing your show, I, had, I, I envision you just with like 15 cookbooks from, you know, between 1935 and 85, right? And Hundreds. you're just like, what am I going to make today? Exactly. Oh, there we go. Or eating, meeting, mighty mo, or a dart or something, right? Yep. So I read cookbooks like people read books. And um, that's kind of how I catch everything. And I find these obscure little food fads that were going on that no one really knows about, or the big ones, you know, like beef stroganoff or pineapple upside down cake or something like that. But I literally just start reading books. And then as I find things that go, oh, that would make a cool show, I would just tab it. So I have hundreds of books, all with little tabs all over the place. So, and I plan my shows a month and actually, um, what I'm what I'm uploading right now is for April. That's how far in advance I am. Holy crap! Yeah, I, I'm a glutton for Ooh. punishment. No, 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 that's cool. That's way <laughs> so, cool. um, so it gives me a lot of time to really think through. Oh, I froze. It gives me a lot of time to really think through what I want because I really want things people are going to not only be interested in, but things people are going to make because that's like what it's all about, right? Like this is like literally history. It's history. And um, to be able to, you know, eat history and or drink history. <laughs> I mean, it's just, um, How about that? Yeah, right? I don't drink bad. <laughs> and my biggest thing is that I, um, I really, you know, as we progress as a society and time, whatever, I don't want these classics to get lost. And so preserving these recipes, or at least on my little channel, you know, saying, hey, they're still here. They're still awesome. And here's how here's where they even came from. That's um, that it's just awesome. It just makes it, it makes my heart sing. Can you share like a really just a, what are the most, um, I guess, um, like mind blowing um, stories, uh, backstories to one of your recipes? Sure. Um, Actually, this is from my, my, one of my favorite stories is from my very first video. So it's Thousand Island Dressing of all things. And um, you can go back and watch it. It's hilarious because <laughs> I had horrible drapes. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I was just, it's bad, but the story is amazing. So um, back in, uh, I have so many days floating in my head. I, it was around 1908. There was a couple in, Oh, nachos is a good one. <laughs> so um, there was a couple in upstate New York and they ran a bed and breakfast and the wife would make all the meals and run the inn and the husband would give fishing tours. And one day this couple came, 1908, don't forget the year, they came to do the fishing tour and they came up to dinner and so her name was Sophia, the, the wife. And it was George and Sophia Lalonde. And um, Sophia served them dinner and she first brought them a salad. And it was topped with her just made up dressing. No one knew what Thalzine dressing was at the time. It was just this random dressing. And it turns out that the couple that was there to have dinner, the woman, what her name was, um, oh shoot, May something. I can't remember. Watch the video. Anyway, she oh, was like, you know, she was a massive, think of the biggest movie star today. That was her at the time. And um, I have so many factoids going in my head that sometimes they don't always come to the surface. Um, but she um, she was actually credited with the very first on-screen kiss, which was like, oh my God, you know, back in the time, because no one's ever kissed on screen before. So that's who was there for dinner. And she's like, oh my God, what is this? dressing sauce thing, you know? And she <laughs> said, um, it's just this dressing I make. And she goes, well, can I have the recipe? And so she gave her the recipe and she wrote it down on a postcard. And um, I think I show the postcard, but I have it anyway. Um, so it turns, so they went, they were done with their vacation. They went back to New York, which is where they lived. And they went to the Waldorf Astoria where she happened to be best friends with the guy that owned it, of course, because you know, she's like superstar. And she said, right. you gotta try the dressing. And so he made it and he loved it. And he gave it to his mater D who was, his name was Oscar 
Cherky. And he was <laughs> very, very, very well known. I mean, super well known. He's actually was known as Oscar of the Waldorf. And so he knew everybody. So he was responsible for putting the dressing on the menu and said, well, we need a name. Where did you get this from? And I said, well, there's bed and breakfast up in the Thousand Islands somewhere. Right? Oh, yeah. and he was like, oh, and that's where the name came from. And they started okay. serving it and it got insanely popular. And it just started spreading through the country. And that's, that's my so favorite cool. story. That is pretty cool. That's I mean, really, a lot of really... cool stories, but that's yeah. the one. That is I'd cool. like to know where the um, the bologna cake <laughs> story is. <laughs> like, yeah, a movie yeah. goes like, go get the bologna cake out of the I freezer. Go get the bologna cake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just bologna oh, cake. Not this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We're having a bologna oh, cake for your birthday, son. <laughs> right? Happy birthday. Yeah. Cut into that bologna and cream cheese. <laughs> I just, uh, Keith Pettig's on here, and that's what I'm going to get him for his birthday next year, is bologna and cream cheese. Excellent. <laughs> He's going to probably flip me off. He ate cream cheese. <laughs> Keith. <laughs> that's nasty. Ooh. Cream cheese? Uh, what are you cooking for the holidays? Um... I'm making brisket for Christmas Yum. because um, I actually make an awesome brisket and I I normally make it for Hanukkah, but oh, that's a good story too. Thank you, Dano. <laughs> um, I um, promised my son that I would make it no matter what because they love my brisket. So I'm doing brisket. I'm actually doing potatoes del Monaco. Nice. I'm going to do your classic green bean casserole, which I have a video on of where it came from. And um, I'm probably gonna do my dump cake for dessert because we're over pie, which I have another video on. Go figure out. I, I actually thought I'm gonna just kind of do my recipes this year. So, and then um, I'm big, our family is big on appetizers. We we love our appetizers. So normally we always start with a million appetizers and snacks and um, we're too full for dinner, but we do it anyway. So yeah. yeah. That's all, right? What it's all about. That and this right here, right? <laughs> uh, what what is so say Jill and her husband are just hanging out and it's like, yeah, what are we gonna do tonight? Or Jill's hanging out waiting for her husband to come home. What's your go-to dish if you just just like I gotta make dinner? What the hell? Well, I never do that. <laughs> okay. Um, I make tacos. <laughs> tacos are great. Um, you know what? I just don't. I'm trying to think of what like my go to is because it's something I make great pasta sauce. So I do pasta. Um, what else do I do? Oh, I love to do filet mignon. I love to do scampi. I love to do scallop yeah. ceviche. See, I don't oh. really cook. I don't cook super retro when I'm not filming. I'm actually cook pretty healthy, but except for the holidays. But um, yeah, a lot of just a lot of seafood. Um, my husband's big on red meat. So I try to get his steaks in. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm like, I don't barbecue a lot unless it's tri-tip. We do a lot of tri-tip out here in California. That's a big thing. Well, that's good stuff right there. It is. And I do. <laughs> <laughs> we were out uh, seven years ago for my friend Kelly's birthday and her sister lives in uh, Agua Dulce mm -hmm. and they did tri-tip. Yep. Yep. And, it's and good. He, her uh, uh, her sister's husband is uh, captain of some fire department in uh, uh, Hollywood, and he's like, "What's we I tip all the time here now in California?" <laughs> oh yeah. yeah I, you know, I was re actually really surprised that tri tip is not an everywhere thing. Yeah, <laughs> I just got to that last week. I got a freezer full. Oh good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it, I think it's great to cook with. It's it's it's, it's easy. Very forgiving. Yeah. It's very easy. But I'm used. I, I I do cook. I'm in the kitchen every day, making something. It's just That's, my happy place. This is funny. Fry tip is the California state. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, Roberta. Roberta's been with me a long time too. <laughs> That's great to have people. Like it's nice to see new people and then people I know. I like I, it's hard to watch the chat and talk, but I appreciate all the comments. So much. <laughs> More of these and you'll have no problem whatsoever. I'm working on this is solid vodka. Yeah, I'm out of hot water. So I'm okay. I switch to uh, white Russians, but that's all right. What is 
Well, you have, you got, like I said, I imagine you with like 15, 20 or a thousand cookbooks. Do you have one that is your favorite of them all or? I do. And I brought it with me. Nice. This is what started. This is what gave me the kick in the butt. Um, hold on. Looking for the camera there. <laughs> 1949, the four treasury favorite restaurants of famous eating places. Look how many tabs I have. Wow. <laughs> this is what I mean when I tab my books. This this book is gold. It's um, I found it. I was in Kernwood, Kernville, California. We were up there for the weekend, and they have a lot of antique stores. And I was going through antique stores, and this book was sitting way in the corner in some obscure corner. And for whatever reason, it caught my eye. And I picked it up and all of a sudden I feel this whoosh, like, oh my God. And I started, I just sat on the floor right there and started reading it. And this just sparked so much of like, people don't know. These are the things that are, and this is actually restaurants from the forties that um, it's actually a, a guidebook that the Ford Motor Company put out that, cause huh. there was a lot of car travel there right back then. And um, so as you're traveling along, go to this restaurant, go to this restaurant. And every restaurant is like their hours, like a, a sentence about it and a recipe from it. And so huh. um, so this so there's your answer Alan, right there. So I, I can't even tell you how many cookbooks I have now. It's um, everywhere I go. I pick up cookbooks. I'm. I'm actually on a kick right now where I love, you know, the, the, the contribution cookbooks, you know, where everybody, people like from a school or a club or yeah. a church and they all contribute recipes, make those little spiral bound books. I am addicted to those right now. So I'm pulling those <laughs> from like the seventies and the sixties and like seeing what the homemakers make back then. And actually in 2021, you're going to start seeing some of those. Cause I'm going to start celebrating the home cooks of, of oh, cool. retroville. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> we actually have one of those from 1959 from oh. Lewiston, Idaho. Oh, just just south Winchester, Idaho, and it's uh, the church put it on in 1959. Oh. And you're looking at a lot of these recipes, going, you know, they cook with Crisco and butter and all that stuff, right? right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, it was really fascinating to see the verbiage. The verbiage was a little different, you know. You, uh, Yes. So you're not taking somebody who's 20 years old in 1959. You're taking somebody who's 70. Right? And, and just the way they talk, you're just kind of like, okay, uh, I, I've heard of that. But it's the rest amazing. Of it is fantastic. My mom has well, a book from night. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, please. I want to hear. <laughs> I think I showed it to you one time, several, maybe a year ago or so, or even, or told you. My mom has a cookbook, but it's dated my birth date, 1945. I was born in 67. So. But it's a Betty Crocker cookbook, and it's got some of the coolest stuff in it. Oh. And once again, the verbiage is a little different than what we use today, but uh, you get the gist of it, and you can go, okay, I can make that, or oh, I've never even heard of a meat, meat frog pie, you know? Like, <laughs> Isn't it fabulous? Yeah, it's, it's very fascinating to, to look at that and just thumb through it. But unfortunately, it's starting to fall apart. Um, so it's just kind of become a family heirloom. Yeah, preserve that thing. That's like, that's once, history. Yeah, exactly. Every once in a while, uh, if I go out there, I'll look through it and I'll take a picture of something that might interest me. And you know, so it's great. That's, stuff. Awesome. that's I mean, that's that's it. That's but that's like childhood memories right there. And that's like what I discovered I love. I didn't even think about that when I started the channel. And then when people started sharing their childhood memories with me, it was like Thank you. You know, like, wow, like you get like a peek inside someone's life from the past and what their house was like and what their family was like and the things their mom made. And um, a lot of times, like if I make a certain recipe, they'll say my mom made this, but she did this. You know, I, I love that stuff. I absolutely I am so grateful. I'm so, so grateful for every single person that's part of the Esther Kitchen because they just people just share so much. And it's like it's, it's just glorious. Absolutely glorious. Yeah. That's got to be one of the coolest feelings when somebody comes up and says, you know, my grandma made this or yeah. my dad or my, my, you know, great grandma or whatever, you know, or mom. And they, you know, they're long gone. And, and you're just like, to me, that's got to be one of the, the greatest feelings. Oh yeah. That's like, well, go salute your grandma and go make it. Cause here's the recipe, Yeah, you know? And cause that's it. I didn't know how to make it. Well, now you do. <laughs> okay, now you do. Exactly. Like the, the potato one, you know, <sighs> That one is good. <laughs> I had part of that in 45 years, you know. 
the, the, second, you know, the second I saw the square in the pan, I went, uh, <laughs> I like the peas yeah. and the, the peas and cream. That's a really good one. Oh, cream but peas. You heard, yeah, you don't hear that very often. People having peas and cream or cre peas and cream. Is it cream yeah. and peas or peas and it's cream? Creamed <laughs> cream peas. But it's for Those like cream, cream vegetables. And then it's like creamed whatever it is you want. And that was that's ex actually extraordinarily 40s. And um, because that's and that's like you asked about evaporated milk. That's right in yeah. that. You know, because you know, companies started putting out cookbooks to using their products, like the Carnation Company put out a whole cookbook in 45 that I have um, huh. about their evaporated milk. And oh, so cool. it's like every recipe contains evaporated milk. And it's, you know, just so people will, oh, I want to make this. I'm going to go buy evaporated milk. And the whole marketing thing started, you know, really launching. It launched huge in the 50s, but it started launching in the 30s, 40s. And before that, it was in the print, you know, in the 1800s and, you know, early 1900s. And it's just, I mean, food history is just amazing. It says so much about us as a um, culture and how we've grown. It is a story yeah. of us, I think. And it's edible. Yeah. <laughs> that, that and, alcohol. And, I, and I'm actually serious. I think alcohol is too, is, is a lot of the story of us. Yep. America was based on, on booze. <laughs> it was actually. That's, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. I, I have this extraordinary cookbook from the 1922. And, um, I'm actually going to do a little series on it later, but um, it was written by a guy. It wasn't really written. He went actually reached out. It's called the Stag Cookbook. And he reached out to very prominent men in 1922 and asked them what their favorite favorite dish was and what the, what the <coughs> recipe was. Ooh, so, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. <Sorry. laughs> and so um, there's, um, there's a recipe from Woodrow Wilson in there. There's recipes from oh, wow. Red from other politicians, just everyone of the oh, day. Cool. And and there's a reason I was telling you this. I don't remember what you said before. I'm starting to drink my martini. A but, um, America oh, was based okay. on booze. So, much <laughs> so there's one recipe. So remember, it's 1922, so we're during Prohibition. So there's one recipe, and it was for a spaghetti sauce. And the guy said, well, it really needs a cup of white wine. So if you can find it, use it. But <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, that's history. Like, it's it's amazing. Yeah. You know, you don't really, you don't, I mean, and you don't really think about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, cool. I'm doing good so far, but I may give you a call. <laughs> no, I need one too. <laughs> 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 but look, I'm doing okay. Mm. <laughs> that's funny. He's so good to me. Oh, hey. We have so many people on Hi, here. Guys. This is awesome. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate Yay. it. Got my I normal crew it. and so many other folks. This is awesome. I brought my crew. Yeah. 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 You all need to start watching Mike because his Wednesdays are awesome. <laughs> it's kind of like the start. I was thinking about it a couple weeks ago. It's like the start of the week, right? You got Sunday, there's a show. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's nothing. And on Wednesday, there's a show. It's mine, and there's another guy running at the same time, and then you've got uh, the hot seat on Thursday, and it just Friday is uh, well. Um, Ryan from the UK, he's got his yeah. show on Friday. What a nice guy! He's a great guy. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like kicks out. Harita, right? Oh, Harita's here. Harita. Was Harita. Oh, I saw you last week. <laughs> Yeah. Yep, she was on. Yeah, last she week. was. She was. I was spying last week to see what I was in for. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. What is your oldest cookbook? Um, it's from the 1800s. I'm thinking like it was like maybe about 1840 or something. Mm. It's literally held together by a string. Um, that's really not my decade, so I'll never do anything from it. But it's amazing because literally they have recipes like. Take a possum and put it in a pot and then throw oh some onions goodness. in it. So talk oh about how you gosh. were talking about, you know, how they word recipes, you know, yeah. Mike. So yeah, this is literally like I don't have a possum and I don't think I want one. So <laughs> that's the recipe. kill the skunk. Cut, yeah. Oh. Cut the stink thing out. And yeah. Get it, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Thank you. But it's amazing to read because it's like I said, it's, it's history and it's way better than reading a history book. It's like food. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's interesting uh, that you got one that old. I mean, I would put that one on the shelf. And, uh, it was actually a um, gift from my 
son and daughter-in-law like a few Christmases ago. And That's yeah, cool. it's it's in a very safe place. <laughs> Just think of the history that thing's seen. Right? But, How many you know, people have held it? The coolest thing is when I get a cookbook and I open it up and the first thing is some inscription saying to so-and-so enjoy the recipes for, and it's like, I'm, and it's mine now, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm holding someone's tr past, you know? And it's, um, oh yeah, no turtles. <laughs> <laughs> I on that one too, but I heard it's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's certain things I can't. And turtles, well. <laughs> <They're so> <laughs> it's like a family Bible, though, right? My uh, step grandma has yeah. a family Bible that dates back to the Revolutionary War, you know. And Whoa, it's just, it's just so cool. Passed down that is that. really Everybody cool. Wrote something, this is going to so and so, and then that generation, this is going to so and so. And it's just how really cool. cool to see that. That's, I mean, that's everything. The same idea, you know? right? Cookbooks, yeah. It's, it's so yeah. much, yeah, it's so much. So that's why I just I just love talking about the past and the chat and the memories and the food and, and, and why food, we ate the food we did when we did, you know. That's that's the cool thing about food though, is is the smell and the taste are it's like hearing an old song, right? It just yep. brings back memories and you're just like oh, taste God. is one of your biggest smell too, one of your biggest memory triggers. And it's, it's like, like, you know, oh, it takes me right back to nineteen seventy-three. When I made uh the uh, hamburger steak. I hadn't had that in years, but I, you know, I hit my stepdad up for the recipe and he's like, oh yeah, I put this, this, this. In. Yeah, it took me right back to Cheney, Washington, man. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. I mean, like everyone that, everyone here that's, you know, on the chat there, you all have a dish that's like, oh my God, I this brings me right back. And that's just the beautiful, beautiful thing about this. And that's why, that's why I do what I do. Oh, uh, recipes with Risa. I just made a water pie. What the heck is a water pie? <laughs> well, that's from um, that's from the um, from World War II, from all the food rations because they don't have they didn't have, you know, it was really hard to make. No, 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 wait, that was from the Depression. Sorry, Risa, that was from the Depression because um, they didn't I'd have be money. Too. I a water pie. <laughs> What's in a water pot? Actually, not as water. Not like water. I can't remember I'm full. No thanks. I can't remember what Thanks, Grandma. You put something in the water, and it solidifies, and it's kind of comes comes out like Jello. Is it Jello? Jello pie? What is it? Gelatin. See, I don't have every single recipe memorized. <laughs> like how else I did. Did. Water. Well, damn you, yeah. Jill! You were supposed to. That's what we talked about. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Better do your homework. <laughs> Come back. It is from the Come back next week. Ooh. Ooh, horchata pie would be good. Horchata, I love horchata. Yes. My uh, my grand, uh, you know, you, the first thing you brought up. I'm making a white Russian, sir. You you brought up uh, <laughs> gelatin, right? And my grandpa, the one that I, I was telling you about earlier, Jill, that found the I found his picture today. He hated, and I know that's a strong word to use, but he hated Jello. Huh? And I don't know why. I'm guessing it had something probably to do with something back in the 30s and 40s that he, you know, they had to eat because you know he was hopping trains and trying to find work and poor. So could that be. could be why I don't. I mean, there's also the texture thing because Jello has a very specific texture, and so you know, it's like cilantro. You love it or you hate it. You know. Uh, I'm gonna ask you that later. Speaking yeah. of which, <laughs> okay, we're behind me. We I'm sorry, I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> I see this much of a sign. I know it's not working for me. Oh, I'm not I'm sure sorry. how this is going, but anyhow, we have this right here. <laughs> Team cilantro, oh. yes or no? And and that's an official question we will ask. Yes, you. yes, yes, yes. Oh no. <laughs> I, <love you. laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I actually just did a um episode on remember the old school shrimp toasts from the Chinese restaurants in the 70s? And there's cilantro in there. And I kind of said, you know, if you're a cilantro hater, use parsley. But oh. I love cilantro. Don't give me any hints yet. Come on, that's that's an official question. I ask everybody. That is my official answer. I love it. Oh, no! ah! love it. Really, <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. Oh. Hell yeah. We, I think cilantro <laughs> was just fine. <laughs> All right. Well, oh. give us your Sad trombone. Just <laughs> guys. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Which, up, by the way, you guys, are you guys up two or three? Uh, we're up one. Oh, Woo, okay it's, then. It's the last episode of the year with a guest. Uh, <laughs> uh cilantro one, and it's all. all right, I gotta work on another. I gotta work on another guest for next. Week. Jill won the golden white Russian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> an award, it. right? Yeah. Hail I'm cilantro. It's yes, funny. No, yes. No. Hail <laughs> cilantro. <laughs> oh, we got Rick from uh, Rick's Barbecue, especially. What's up, my brother? He's Rick's awesome. Yeah. Roberta says yes, cilantro. I mean, geez, this was. Funny. It's funny how you either like it or you don't. It, it's totally, crazy. totally. It's like some people say it tastes like soap, and I guess if you <laughs> think it tastes like soap, you like it. I don't know. <laughs> Right, hey, we got a question. question. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Go ahead. Go, no, oh, I, go. I was just going to read uh, Hobie's Garage Bar or no, yeah. Hobie's Garage Barbecue. Question, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Well, I do have a superpower, and it's cooking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, um, I think it would be awesome to be able to have, like, the invisibility cloak. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, to, like, stalk people. <laughs> it likes cilantro. <laughs> Boom! Right? <laughs> yeah. Where the hell did that pull, come from? Pull the rug right out of underneath them. <laughs> uh, if I just get a whole bunch of people and one side doesn't like cilantro, I'm like, I just don't know how you could possibly have guacamole without cilantro. Oh! <laughs> Why would I, I, I have it? I can when have it all day kid, long. When my daughter was a, a kid. I convinced her that guacamole came from a bird called a guac bird. <laughs> Poor thing. Like, That's oh, awesome. Does that work? I go, go, it goes guac. <laughs> oh my God. Gross. Isn't it awesome what you can convince your kids of? I, I convinced my kids. I had oh. eyes in the back of my head because we were driving. You know, when I'd see you in the rearview mirror, I'd see you do that. Oh my gosh, you can see us. You know. <laughs> Kids are awesome. Oh, funny. Things we did during kids. They're yeah. awesome. Mine would mine would be running around all crazy at the check stand at, in the you know like when you're grocery shopping, and so to get them to stay right there while I was like writing my check. That was back in the days when you wrote checks, you know, for groceries. I'm sitting there writing my check, and I'd make them stand like hold the counter up. I'd say, "You better hold this counter up so it doesn't fall down <laughs> while we wait." Okay, so they're you really holding the counter. <laughs> The kids are and then they the get older. It's gonna fall. <laughs> yes, yeah, they like, get older. It's not gonna fall, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. I need your help. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, kids are awesome. Kids are awesome. Know. Thank you, Rick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have right. not done lemon meringue pie yet, but um, I'll tell you what. I have a massive stack of requests, and I am going to. Write it down right now. So here's my thing. If if I know how to, I, I have great a great lemon pie recipe. If I can grab um, enough to make an episode, I will. So I will. And actually, I always like to give credit where credit is due. So down was good patty. I'm putting it down right now. Because uh, I can't please. That's why I do this. So I missed a question from Harita. So I oh. back. I backtracked. Yeah. Harita says, do you have recipes from the Great Depression era? I've I, heard of the water pie. So I'm assuming I you have, have others. I have two recipes right now um, up there. One is um, called Victory Meat Patties, which was our version of the cheeseburger. And I go oh. into why they're called Victory Meat Patties and not cheeseburgers. And then I do another one called um, it's Tamale Pie. Ooh. And both of them are fabulous. And they're straight out of the Depression, World War. No, I'm sorry. Wait, were we talking World War II or Depression? Depression. Okay. So I, I'm sorry. I backtracked. Those were World War II. Um, depression, I have one recipe. And actually, another thing people do is they share their family recipes with me, which is oh. like, thank you. You know, there's not enough words That's to like say. That's the ultimate reward right there. So um, someone shared um, her grandmother's recipe for something called poor man's meal 
which I did. Um, so you can find it on my channel. And um, it's it's um, actually tastes just like beefaroni. But it's oh. straight out of the Depression. And I actually show a picture of her grand, it's grandfather, grandmother. I'm sorry, I have so many videos up there. But it's either grandfather or grandmother. And I show their picture and I make the recipe. And actually, it's really good. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, my plan is to do some more um, Depression and World War II food ration dishes in the new year. But like I said, I'm already up to April, so I've got to figure something out. <laughs> yeah. Throw some <laughs> beans. Show, you might throw be some beans on. <laughs> exactly. It should be victory beans right here. Right. Do it's actually <laughs> just the and victory and freedom, like freedom fries and victory meat uh -huh. patty. And um, I want you to go on there and look at it, but it's like really the the stories are cool. Stories not really murder, no murder burgers back then. My no onion flings. Yeah, Busta bust caps. <laughs> Darnell wants to know if you had to cook one last dish, what would it be? Wow, Darnell. Yeah, that's a wow. That's a serious question. How big can this dish be? <laughs> that's, a, that's I know, right? Um, man, one last dish. Gosh, give me a minute to think about that because that's we'll a crazy question. What about you, Mike? Yeah. What about you, Mike? What, what would the last dish you would, would ever make? I don't like that one as well. That's a tough one. Hmm. Several dishes come to mind, but you know, it's just like. Uh, I don't know. It, it may be my brisket just because my kids love it. And at the end of the day, I'm a wife and mother and I want to make my family happy. And I've been making or eating and making this for years. So it might be that or it might be some good old jalapeno bacon mac and cheese. Cause that's oh. I hear love. love. Wow. That's what I hear. I hear love. Wow, <laughs> like, you want to you want to leave a, a legacy of love, and you show love through your cooking. My my world is love. Everything, <laughs> love and gratitude. Totally. Obi wants to know what was what the easiest dish that you can make that you could do without thinking at all. My pasta sauce. Which I'll never be on my show because it's my personal recipe. There you go. But I will give you a hint. I always add pesto to my pasta. Oh, I love pesto. I always add vodka. Oh, <laughs> oh. I would drink that. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> oh wait, did we switch to white Russians? We did. Uh, oh, I don't yeah. have any more hot water. Uh, no more hot water. Kind of forced to. Mm -hmm. Is that, 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 that an answer? Yeah. It's, it's a like, shame. These are I, questions. I never think about this stuff. You know? Harita I don't. Has, yeah, Har Harita's got another question. She says, what was the first dish you ever cooked? And when was it? Uh, that was probably like my own as a kid, going way back to my own personal Chef history. Boyardee. Yep. Yep. Chef Boyardee in a can. Boyardee, <laughs> <You probably only. laughs> isn't it? I also loved um, the spaghettios with the hot dogs. Oh, because I would eat all the spaghettios first, and then I would um, save the hot dogs for last. Oh, spaghettios! <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot all about them. Oh yeah, baby. Yes. <laughs> they 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 smell like throw up. <laughs> oh no! Don't say that. No, they don't. Oh my! <laughs> They're Jill, awesome. Jill, I'm my looking for a new co-host. <laughs> Monica's out of here. I mean <laughs> no, yeah, I'm gonna get no cilantro and <laughs> she thinks spaghettios smell like barf. <laughs> she uh, has to go. She gotta go now. <laughs> you know, but that that brings up a, another question. Are there is there any vegetables or meat or anything that you won't cook? Yes. Um okay. I won't I won't go to go to veal. I don't No, no, veal. no. It, okay. I was gonna say it's, it could be a personal question. So no, no I don't care. Prices. I'm an open book. I've had a lot of martini. No, I don't do veal. Um, <laughs> I actually posted on my Facebook group. I said, you know, the more martini I'm going to drink, the more real I'm going to get. So you might want to be in on this because <laughs> when you on my show, I'm nice and proper and everything, right? But this is the real me. Um, 
And um, like stuff like like we talked about turtles and stuff. I can't. They're too cute, you know. Or know. a lot a lot of the game meets probably not. I'm I'm, I'm very very strict. Well, like I'll do venison, but like not like and wild boar I'll do, but um, cool. like 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 possums will not. We're not going to go there. Wild boar is like <laughs> bacon, right? Bacon and wild boar. Would that be and the I same? Do, I do make my own bacon. Ooh. But I'll never do that on my show. It's like this is like my privacy. I, I always I make my own bacon. I cure my own salmon. Yum. Nice. And um, oh, can we talk about my radio show? I'm totally Let's do it. Coming up. That is coming up. Is it coming up? Okay, I'm sorry. All right. No, no, no. You're fine. Let's get into it. You're in charge. You have, a radio, just no, you have a radio show. I have a radio you show. Interviewed. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. You tell us. Tell us about your radio show. Okay, so it kind of happened kind of crazy. Um, it's it's starting, my first um, show is going to be December 27th. So what happened was um, I used to be in corporate America. And um, I spent 10 years at the Guitar Center. Mm. If you know that company. I think they're in bankruptcy right they're now. They're in bankruptcy. Yeah. But um, this was a long time ago. And I worked there for 10 years. And actually, I was an IT geek, if you can believe that. Um, which, which don't, bleh, bleh. so, um, anyway, so while I was there, there was a guy that worked there by the name of Jack Sonny and Jack used to be in this little known, uh, thank you, Risa. He used to be in this little known band called Dire Straits. Have you heard of that? A little one. Mm. <laughs> Might have. Uh, so, but I, I think when you work there, you probably got your money for nothing. And that's just for free, right? <laughs> yeah. So. I haven't talked to him in years, but um, we were friends on Facebook. And so one day I just got this inspiration to reach out to him and say, um, can I interview him? I have this YouTube channel and like, mm -hmm. I know it's retro, but you were in Live Aid and that was the 80s. So we can have the retro <laughs> tie in, right? Okay, Always got it. And he wrote back and went, yes. So then I'm like, oh crap, what do I do now? <laughs> because I've never interviewed him before. <laughs> so, um, we did the interview. It's actually uploaded, and it's going to be the very first episode of Yester Kitchen for 2021, which is going to be on January 2nd. So um, it's actually, he's the coolest guy. He literally was a rock star, right? I mean, so um, so anyway, while we were talking, he said, well, I'm starting a radio station, and I love your channel, and would you be interested in having a show on my radio station? And I'm like, of course I'm going to say yes. And then again, right. we go, oh, crap, what do I do now? You know, because I've never done anything like this. So um, so there's a um, radio station, internet radio station called Live 365. And actually, it's up now. So if you want to go listen to him, it's Jack Sonny Radio. And they play a lot of just really cool stuff. On Sundays is my time slot, Pacific Time. 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Right now, they're just kind of playing audios of my Yester Kitchen shows until I have my actual show. But now that um, now that I have radio, I have the license to play music. So I can cool. do anything I want. So oh, I'm going to do whatever I happen to be cool. talking about that week. I'll be spinning music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And cool. it will be kind of like Yester Kitchen on steroids. <laughs> because we're going to talk about, I'm going to, you know, pick, did, I, actually, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do yet, but um, it's going to be amazing. And and it's just going to be like expanded on what I do here. And I'm not letting go of this, of YouTube. I, I love doing this. So I'm going to have a YouTube channel and a radio show. It'll and, follow you too, right? I'm sorry? It'll follow you too, right? I hope so. Yeah, I don't see why not. <laughs> I don't see got, why not. I got internet where you're going, right? Right, exactly. Everywhere I go, yep. Actually, yeah. So, um, so I'm totally excited, and I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but it's going to happen. <laughs> Some loser out there said Dawkin. Dawkin. I don't know who, <laughs> yeah. this, I don't Dawkin. Know who this Timothy Jackson guy is, but he reminds me of my uncle Timothy Jackson. Okay, so we know Timothy. <laughs> loser. No, Dawkin is rocked. Dawkin is rocking. Yeah. <laughs> he actually, my uncle Tim. That's my uncle Tim. I love the guy. Taught me everything I know about girls. Uh -oh. And uh, <laughs> yeah. he used to live here in Boise, and he was like, he's seven or eight years older. But he lived in Manhattan Beach, and I think oh. his neighbor was oh, Ronnie James Deal. I think. No. Oh, wow. Was it Ronnie That's James cool. Deal, Tim? Seriously? No, no. Or was it Dawkins? Don Dawkins. One of the two. 
Oh my God. I'm impressed. Yeah. Either one. Yeah, exactly. That's like, yeah. So, so yeah. So it's like totally, totally, totally excited. Like, so, so is this, um, yeah, Chef Adventures wants to know if it's a podcast or if it's like an actual oh, live streaming. It's a radio. live stream radio show. That's cool. Which means screw up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably can. will. I'm just going to be. I'm gonna talk for an hour. We're gonna spin some tunes. Oh, really? That yeah, was his next door neighbor, literally. Yeah. That's so cool. He's actually, a nice guy. He really, that's was. so cool. <laughs> that's awesome. So, no, it's gonna be live, and um, once it's gone, it's gone. No. <laughs> so, 4 p.m. Pacific time, starting the 27th of December. Okay. So, and, and which is perfect because then I'm gonna air Jack's interview on the second. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Perfect. So you're going to, uh, and, and this actually is a great segue into a, a question towards the end, your uh, social media. You'll obviously blast this on your social media. I would. I am. Okay. Oh, I definitely and We am. can find you at. You can find me on, on Facebook under Yester Kitchen. Um, actually, there's a link to my Yester Kitchen Facebook in pretty much any of the newer videos. Okay. So on hop you. on there. Join, be part of it, post stuff. I love when people post stuff. Oh, thank you, Rick. Right on, Rick. Rick's awesome. Love Rick. So, cool. I will Join definitely have to do that because I'm usually just uh, about that time uh, for me on Sundays. I'm just uh, finishing up either cooking or thinking about my next video. So perfect. I'll just turn on and go, I know this gal. I'm going to call in. Right. Her. So I won't have Collins yet. But, ah. um, but you will be able to harass me, I promise, eventually. So <laughs> where do you take your special, special requests on Facebook, or where should we send those? <laughs> yes, on Facebook. Yes. Um, join my Facebook group. Good. You can you can message me there. And, um, yeah. Good. That's yeah. Exciting. Totally. Yeah. I, I absolutely love hearing from everybody. Good. That's cool. And, yeah, right. cool, cool things are happening. kind of jealous, but... <laughs> I, that's, no, I'm kidding. And that's awesome. I we'll love Chicago. Yep. Old, 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 old Chicago. Oh. All about, man. Love Anything from yeah. Chicago 1, 2, and 8, I am down. So if you go on my Facebook group, I, I created three playlists, um, huge playlists for my radio show, and I sent them off to the radio station. But one of the stations, I asked for requests, and I everyone that requested anything I added to the playlist and it's on my Facebook group. You can listen to it anytime you want. It's like three, four hours worth of music. I'm constantly updating it. So if you want to request more, yeah. let me know. I will add your favorite tunes and dock in. We can, I don't have any docking on it. <laughs> docking is rocking. Dock is rocking. <laughs> so I mean, so I know a lot more than food. I really do know a lot about, about the music, you know, from especially so the 70s cool. and 80s. And um yeah. So it's like, it's so exciting that I can, because you can't play music on YouTube, right? You're going to get a license yeah. and can on the radio. And they're done that. Yeah, exactly. And I wasn't even <laughs> the one playing the music. <laughs> you get some deep purple. You got to get some deep purple in there. <laughs> Absolutely love deep purple. Yeah, we're going to get into like all kinds of things. All kinds That's of things. P Peter Gabriel. <laughs> yes. yes. Genesis. Yes. There you go. Uh, yeah. Jill, uh, yeah. have you ever cooked something and you're thinking, oh, this is going to be great? And it just turns out. Bleh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all have, right? Of course. I, I love hearing these stories. <laughs> oh, man. So um, the first thing that comes to mind is the loose meat sandwich, which is actually a classic icon in Iowa. And it's where the um, sloppy joke came from. Oh, so it's literally instead of making a patty, it's ground beef on a bun with maybe a couple pickles. Huh. And so a few years ago, I thought when the kids were still home, I'm like, I'm going to make these. We're going to have some history because I've always been. A, um... <laughs> I don't have them. I'm, I'm reading the question. So I um, so I made these and no one liked them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've done that before. But it turns out Sloppy Joe is like my almost my number one video. So apparently the loose meat sandwich gave way to something pretty awesome. That's funny. But yeah, it, it they were like, oh, I just don't like this at all. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay. Like you really that, so I'm good. Tim, who was on here, my uncle, 
uh, my mom made, uh, and I and I reference it in my hamburger steak gravy. Uh, I saw that one by the way. Tuna one. fish, no, uh, tuna casserole with peas. <laughs> And he was yeah, there. He yeah. was nasty. <laughs> you know, and it sounds delicious the way, you know, you think about putting it together, but uh, I can still taste it to this day. <laughs> oh, well, then don't watch my tuna noodle casserole video. I bit. love tuna casserole. Yeah. It's un-American if you don't like no, it. No, I love it. Tuna yeah. casserole rocks, man. It's, it. it's like the quintessential dish of the 50s. Yeah. Hope my mom's not watching. <laughs> She'd be like, <laughs> You liked it, you know it. No, I didn't. Mom. <laughs> Went to the neighbors. Oh I say that to my kids. You <laughs> loved it. No, I didn't, mom. <laughs> you had it before and you liked it. No, no, kids. <laughs> Have you ever met any? Who, oh, no. Here's a question Who is your favorite celebrity chef? Graham Aside Care. from me. Besides you, it's a tough one, but it's Graham Care, the Galloping Gourmet out of the 1970s. That is actually my inspiration. Is it? Okay. I love Julia Child, mm -hmm. but Graham Care. Oh, my God. He would come on. He would be on stage and jump around and drink wine and get all drunk. And <laughs> you know, right up our alley. Oh, man. Right up our alley. So, yeah, he was 100% um, 100 my favorite. I used to watch him when I was like, I don't know, 8, 9, 10. I don't know. But, yeah. Aw, cute time. Okay. That was going to be my next question is uh, uh, greatest influence. So same thing. That's yeah. Cool. That's it's just like something about the seventies cooking shows, you know, they're nothing like the food network shows. The food network right. shows are great. Don't get me wrong, but something about them, they were just so genuine, you know, and so real and um, they they filmed the mistakes and they, they, smoked, they, on them, you know? and they oh. smoked on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. They're smoking exactly. and making the pot roast. Exactly. I mean, I my you know? grandma over the stove with a cigarette and the ashes about that long, you know, cooking away. <laughs> Gloria. My grandpa's got a Absolutely. spatula going like this. Yeah. <clears throat> yep, the good old days, right? Good old days, right? Where nothing, you couldn't do anything wrong. Yeah. But I mean, but they're, today's I find is so polished, right? Where back then they were not. They were not. But that yeah. was part of their charm. Correct. And I think maybe that, not back then, but how many women were like falling over themselves for Graham Care for the gallop for the galloping gourmet? You know, they were, but you when they pan the audience, the men are in suits, the women are in dresses, they're right. all prim and proper, you know, and the, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Here is a question yeah. for you. Yes, they did every and guess what? I will be doing recipes on my on my radio show. That's cool. I was going to ask that. That is awesome. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We're going to focus on one decade every show, and I'll focus on a dish like I do on my channel. But then we're going to get into like some of the darker stories of the decade, which is something I don't want to do on YouTube, but I can do on the radio because it's going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I, I actually I, I have a fetish. I like to watch Julia Child. Mm. I really do, and there's just something <laughs> yes, about it. it. It's <laughs> unpolished. It, I love she unpolished. Put it out there. She did. It's just like this is how it is. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for her to drop a, a derogatory slang, you know, when you listen to her. But I mean yeah. she doesn't, but you just expect it, right? It's right. so much like my grandparents because my she's God. had a generation, right? My favorite line, if you don't like butter, use cream. I mean, come on. Exactly. You it's know? just straightforward. You either love me or you don't. Right. Look, and everyone look, loved her. Yeah. God, you have this like six foot woman with a deep voice who knows how to cook, and she's oh, yeah. just like, you know, yeah. There was no she, bullshit. Absolute no bullshit. Absolute yeah. treasure. Yeah. Absolute treasure. Who I am? Watch me or not? Right? Exactly. I actually watched the commercial for the first time, the Orson Welles commercial, where he's doing the Chianti, I think, something like that, and he is hammered. Have you ever seen that? You have to Google it. No, but I'm writing it down. It is so funny. <laughs> He's just like, and you know, I was just sitting here drinking a wine, and this couple like they're dressed in the seventies, and they're just like <laughs> watching him. <laughs> you can tell he's hammered, and that boy had been oh, drinking. Love it. Uh, I wouldn't know anything and, about that. And it was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep drinking, Mike. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Have another white Russian. Yeah. Hey, Monica, Hi. where's your drink, or do you not drink? Um. Well, yeah, I I was running a little late, so all I had okay. was a 
is a, a root beer. Oh. A, a and W, there's nothing wrong with that. Something wrong Jill. To, with the whistle. Hey, um, Jill, I so need a new co host. Good I know. God, I know. I feel like I'm Seriously? All over the place. <laughs> I've even she handed you one. Give her a break. I've got you I back. Yeah, you were supposed to be Monica. Yeah. I know. Off I, to me. <laughs> now, we, when we first started the show, I would make a white Russian and go like this, right? And then I'd pull it out. Oh, yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's so cool. My yeah, husband actually, loves it. So, um, Let's see here. Or Johnnyelle wants to know um, how you feel about uh, dudes jellies. <laughs> Where the you're guy last that. week, dude jellies. No, I'm not. I know. Are those the shoes that like really yeah. the girls wore in the eighties? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, and and now the that, dude wore in the well, Big Lebowski. And the Big Lebowski also. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if you need your foot covered and you prefer jellies, and there they go. <laughs> I was thinking they, they, I would think that they would look a lot more steamy on a guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't, girls. You know what? If, if you're twenty two, if you're twenty two, maybe, maybe you know. But at fifty three, whatever's comfortable, you wear. You don't give a damn. No, you don't go. <laughs> It'd be like saucy, Am I saucy, to say that? saucy shoes. Oh, fuck that, man! I, ain't I would that. never say that on my show, but. Fuck that. <laughs> A lot on this show, but not yours. Me blisters when I was I was young. I wear them and I get blisters on my feet. I'd be like, right? Man, I ain't wear that, mom. I have the jelly <laughs> shoes with the leggings and the long sweater, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. mm -hmm. And then the sweater but, be hanging off to one side. Oh, you had to have the flash dance look, totally. Right. totally. <laughs> Go oh, my valley but girl. I have no problem with jellies because I do not judge anyone. If you're being, if you're not like killing people and hurting people, then I have no judgment. Wear your jellies and be proud. Exactly. You do you. it. Do uh, jellies. Like, yeah, do jellies. Like hurting somebody, who cares? Do it. Right. Yeah. Do your thing, man. Do your thing. That's right. Be what who is you it? are. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. All oh right. So God. when you're. <laughs> this is great. This is great. I can do this all Because there is. <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you film right now i'm really like relaxed just kick back like probably can't hear me. when you film he's gonna fall out of his chair pretty soon yep. <laughs> when, okay, monica you can take over okay. exactly <laughs> god about a month ago man i had, had so many and i was like, <laughs> I was like true story yawns. Like I was young. Really? Yeah. I don't even remember the last half of the that show. Was crazy. Oh, gosh. Remember we had Mama Z on. Mama Z on. She did. What we have is open bar seating afterwards, and she came on, and I vague. <laughs> My computer crashed five minutes before I was going to go live, and I had a. I've never really had one. Hey, where's my martini? I. He's here. I have my. I'm good. <laughs> I have no, no I had that, but that's okay. <laughs> I had a, I had a panic attack, and I was just like freaking out, like, and I had to grab my work laptop, and I'm waiting for it to fire up. So I ended up having another white Russian because I always have one right before, and I had another one that threw me off. The whole white. Oh, honey. Yeah, extra white Russian. Ah, shit happens, right? I moved shit on. I mean, always happens. Yeah, I was on the hot seat with CJ the next day, and we were talking about it, and Kent from daddy dutch barbecue he's like yeah that's never happened to me as he's holding up a bottle of whiskey <laughs> <laughs> pretty common actually <laughs> hey, Jill, um, when you do, go ahead go, go ahead monica oh harita had another question and she says um what is your favorite spice and herb to use garlic salt For Jill. <laughs> garlic salt <laughs> is the bomb i know i love garlic salt um i do I do know my spices and I absolutely love my spices. Um, like um, I grind my own dry chilies to make my own chili powder. So I love those. Um, cardamom, I kind of did on. Um, basil, oregano, but I'd say that my go-to is garlic salt. Everything has garlic in it, especially because I have a husband that hates onions. Oh. I know, right? So I'm usually more on the garlic side, so. Okay, yeah, I get it. 
Yeah, I do. Do you use <laughs> fresh garlic also? Fresh garlic? I use garlic? a lot of fresh garlic. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. There's garlic. It's good for your heart. It's good for your soul. And Joel, kind of want to talk a little bit about social your distancing editing. as well. <laughs> yeah, very good for that. <laughs> right. Um, do you have somebody help you film, or is it just a one person show? Just, yeah, that's pretty much me too. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's how I can be so silly because I'm not. There's no one there, so I can just be me, and so it's just me. Yeah. Okay. So I make sure everyone's out of the house and. Um, or my husband, like, because because of COVID, you know, I go, you got to go stairs and don't move, and yeah. So it's gotcha. just it's just me. And how how has COVID has it affected your cooking styles at all, or anything like that? None whatsoever. I gotta be me. <laughs> I, I dig that. That's cool. That's cool. I'm I'm actually um where I live right now. I'm not in the main city. I'm very much in the suburbs. So um. We really don't feel COVID as much as I guess the bigger cities would. Okay. Um, so, so we, you know, I, I do wear my mask when I go to the market, but other than that, like we're here and, and, you know, my husband has to work at home too. So we kind of work together and, but I'm here. This is, as this is my office. Um, cool. It used to be my younger son's bedroom, but since they all moved out, I commandeered and he's in the other, he has his office and we kind of really don't even see each other until unless we happen to cross during the day so um, my wife and I work together too yeah it's 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 interesting huh <laughs> I, I don't mind it one bit it, it is interesting at times you're right but for the most part it's no biggie it, it's what are you doing now? jill are you still in it or no oh god no i actually left corporate america two years ago um very 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 grateful i do not have to go have a job a job um hey, this is my job we all still are there. <laughs> I, I, I do YouTube 24 seven and now apparently I'm doing YouTube and radio 24 okay. seven, but I literally work seven days. I've never worked harder or okay. with more passion on anything in my Have life. More fun, probably. This, this Isn't is how this, it is though. Yeah. I mean, with my YouTube channel, I have never worked harder yep. in my life and I love every second of it. Right. It's a lot. It's hard work. It was so when you, guys, yeah. It's like this is great because I'm getting there. There's Rod. Oh, there goes Rod. <laughs> Where's my martini? <laughs> I guess maybe I'm being too loud. I don't. There's no one in the house. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. That's okay. I think we're okay. <laughs> so, um, Rod will be joining me in um my very last episode of the year. And I'm totally excited because he's actually coming on camera and he's actually doing most of it. And we are making a uh, old fashioned and we're going to smoke it. And so it's like the one time I will ever go outside of retro because, you know, they didn't have smoked old fashions back then, but I will talk about the history of old fashioned, but we're, but we've just come to absolutely love smoked old fashions. So we're going to do a new year's Eve episode toward the end of the year and um, smoke the old fashioned. Without cool. a without a smoking gun or a dome or any of that stuff, we'll okay. show you the way we do it. Yeah, I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. That'll be fun. Absolutely. Do you do you shoot with one camera, two camera, two cameras? Oh. I have one on my food and one on me. Okay, I used to do that as well, but it's uh. It's, you shoot with one? I I do. Wow, um, I'm the impressed. Hardest, the hardest part is. The editing with two for me, I find, uh, right? So if I have, I, I have got to bring two feeds in together to one. It's like, oh god. I have an editor. <laughs> oh, do you? No, I don't. I I tried. I tried for ten minutes, and um, <laughs> I, <laughs> it didn't go well. And I went out and hired an editor. So okay. um, I tell them everything to do. Like I tell them, I want text here. I want pictures here. I want you to cut here. I want you to cut here. But I, 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 I bow to your awesomeness seriously because I just can't do it. <laughs> you know, it, to me, it kind of came down to what makes more sense. Can I move the camera, or, or what? So what I do is I'll, you know, I do my monologue and I film in order. I don't film out of order, uh -huh. but I will, you know, I'll do cuts. Like when I did the Patty Joe. Right. That was real <laughs> bullshit, right? That was like take two. 
And that's what I say. If I'm sitting there doing my thing, I'll go. Oh, yeah. Take two. I give myself a couple seconds and then I go. Mm-hmm. But uh, if I will actually physically stop it, I'll, I'll go cut, stop it, mm-hmm. and then move the camera to where I need it to be. Action. That's where I screw up at because wow. I, when I did my McCovrib sandwich. That looks that, so good. <laughs> I get, I've had more people go, God, that's an interesting. I, I love the name or, you know, well, how cool is that name or things like that. But I forgot to hit record when I was actually prepping the, the meat. But I had stock footage from when I did ribs <laughs> exact same way three months ago. And so yeah. I cut it in. And if you look real close, I'm wearing a different shirt and it's warm outside. <laughs> when I'm prepping it. Instead of having one rib, I have two all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> yep. I'm telling you, it's um, it's not easy. It's not. We, we work very, we're, it's a passion, but we work very hard. Or you forget to turn the mic on? Oh, God. I forgot to turn my food camera on a few times. I, My mic, I actually got a new mic because mine was very echoey and I heard from my people. You know, I, it sounds like you're in a, you know, a sound tunnel. So I got a new mic and... um. You have shotgun, lapel, what, what kind of mic do you have? I have a um a, a clip-on leveler mic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, I, I, this one seems to work, but it's, yeah, it's a lot. I, I didn't expect this. But another thing I didn't expect was the friends I would make who have other channels such as yourself. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Like, so much wow. So much wow. That's, that's like, I never even, didn't even occur to me. And now I have friends all over the world who mm-hmm. have beautiful, amazing channels. And yeah, it's yeah, pretty. To me, it's the people I've met. They're just yes. absolutely amazing. You know, yes. it doesn't matter if you're into cooking, whether it be retro or barbecue or one of my favorite channels is the Kitchen Queers. Those guys, they do anything and everything they I want. I love Mitch and Phil. Love Mitch. Yeah, they're great. You know, everybody in this community comes together. It's, and they're willing it's to help the other person. Actually, Mitch emailed me just about this time last year. And he said, hey, we've been cleaning out some old boxes. And we found some cookbooks from 1950. Can I send them to you? I'm like, oh, yes. Yeah, so I have some some gifts from Mitch and Philip. It's, um, and then I, have a, I have a fan who um, crocheted me trivets. She emailed me. One day, she goes, That's she goes cool. you you shouldn't be using these trivets. Do you, you need crocheted trivets from the seventies? And I'm gonna make them for you. I have trivets. Like it's like you never know. It's it's you know, such a blessing. That's such a blessing. It is. I it just it blew my mind when I first got into this community. You know, if, when I first started, for me it was like a competition. It didn't take me, you know, because I I would look at like let's see your channel or or anybody else. That's my competition. It took me about a month to realize no, these guys are not competition. We are no. partners. There is yeah, plenty of room for everyone. I love that. We're all partners. Yeah. And we all support and each other. And we all, yeah. Yeah. The, the collabs, you know, like speaking of Mitch. Mitch did yeah. something for Uncle Steve Shake. And I use Uncle Steve Shakes pretty much exclusively. And so he plugged my channel and used some of my footage. You know, and he had reached out to me. And of course, of course you can. I, I you know, I appreciated that he reached out to me. But of course yeah. you can. I mean, Beautiful. just very kind, kind souls with big, big hearts. And it's just, I I, mean, I even say, like, I'm so lucky to have found myself in this group. You know, I don't know how it happened, but I'm so grateful. Yeah. And, and, and Darnell said, don't let, I think he's talking about Keith, that like, don't let hear, Keith hear you say community, it's family. And it is. It, it really is. It, it, it totally you know, is. Yeah. It totally yeah. is. I mean, I'd have never... I've gotten no new for me. I've always wanted two things cooking show and a talk show. This allowed me to do it. And I, you know, everybody I've brought on, I've just got such a, I already respect everybody, but such a deeper respect. For people. Yes. It's beautiful. And I, and I hope it's that everybody else gets that as well. You know? So, oh, so do I, so do I, I mean, especially because oh. they can see us like, like, you know, when we, when they see us on our channel, we, we do our thing. We're just talking and doing our. Uh, there's an alarm going off. Sorry, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the garage, so I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> oh, Hopefully, they'll Coming the martini, Jill. You'll never notice it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but it's just such a, it's just a glorious thing because it's, it's it's an unexpected surprise what happened with, with the group and the community and everything and it's just like well fuck this is pretty damn amazing it is you know? it's, it is uh yeah you know, i i've one of the questions i was going to ask and i know you've met judy ann you know uh how many uh youtubers have you met or Let's, i mean just round number uh not a lot because where i live i'm pretty good distance actually judy ann lives like 10 minutes from me okay i so, love her channel I don't get a uh, I do too. She's, she's a sweetheart yeah. she's an absolute sweetheart um kevin from um trap bistro came over mm -hmm. and did a collab with me but he actually came here and the very next day i went there and we okay. filmed episodes together so that was glorious um, but then like, like chef adventures, I know my, my stream has stopped, so I don't know if they're still chatting, but, um, uh, last one was Darnell that I see. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but like chef adventures, we actually have become friends and okay. we've done some collabs together. We've never met in person, but like I said, so my next phase of life is coming soon. And so hopefully I'll get to meet them. But so, so. In person, not a lot, but uh oh, I'm getting an error. Am I still showing for you guys? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Ooh, cool. Then I'm just gonna get rid of this error. I don't know if they're gonna... um, no Bill Gates fix. So, but hopefully, okay. So here's my here's the deal. In May, we're moving to Idaho. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stay there for the summer, but because it's like you said, Mike, way up by Canada, we're not gonna be there for the winter because it's too damn cold. Oh my God! Yes. So after the summer, we're actually looking at RVs now, big giant diesel pushers, and we're going to be living on the road. There you go. I'm so I can visit here. everybody. Yeah. And I can do shows with everybody. Like Monica, I don't know where you are, but I'm going to come to your place too. I'm like, not where too far gonna... from Mike. I'm like oh, good. From Mike. fifteen miles from here. Yeah. <laughs> so my son went to BSU. One of my Let twins. And um, he graduated a couple of years ago, but he lives here now, but he's moving back to back to Boise in um, January or February. So I will be going there. So I'm going to be so close to you guys. So we're going to be like, where, I went, I went where to Boise are you State. at right now? Did you? We used to say, I was in a fraternity. We'd say, come let us BSU. <laughs> I wonder if you're my, son, my son's fraternity. Uh, I was a teak. Oh no, okay. no, we had teaks at our school. Nope. But um right on. Greek Greek life. <laughs> I'm sorry, Monica. What was that? So, uh, where where are you where do you live right now? So I am in Ventura County, California, which oh. is so like Ventura Highway. Ventura Highway. Like the Ventura Highway. <laughs> um like yeah. Vasilia. Um, I am about 45 minutes outside of Los Angeles which is perfect because I'm not in the city and I'm very much in the suburbs. And so it's like uber quiet, except for the occasional car alarm, it's uber quiet. And, um, <laughs> yeah, and that was your own in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in a very small town. So um, the police are um, know everybody. <laughs> so it's a very safe town and it's it very quiet. And it's, um, it's a, I'm, I'm going to miss it a lot. I'm going to miss it a lot. But um, on to new adventures, right? We're going to hit the open road. I love the idea yes. of just uh, hopping in an RV and going, you know? Yeah. I don't I've know how I'm going to film my show, but I'll figure it out. My wife and I have made a pact if we ever get laid off, because like I said, we work for the same company. We're just going to take a month off, and we're going to head south, and we're going to head east, and we're going to head north, come back, come home, That's and awesome. find a job. That's and awesome. Go meet a bunch of YouTubers. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. We took January off and traveled. Um, That'd be fun. I know. I cannot wait to meet you guys. Like, I've been talking to Chef Agent. We actually do happy hours on Zoom every now and then. And so, like, we become very good friends. And so, I, can, I cannot wait to meet these two in person. But, um, right. yeah. <laughs> well, Jill, this is the part of the show. Uh, we, we, I, would, I have so many more questions. But this is the part of the show where we kind of, like, we have, I call it open bar seating. And anybody and everybody who wants to come on to the show is allowed to come visit. You're more than welcome to stay. You can go. 
Oh, yay. Whatever. I can hang out. I'll just, awesome. I'll just. Oh, see, now all of a sudden everything's moving again on my thing. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe we, uh, I just need to do that. Three. Monica needed to do something. Monica. Jill, what does 2021 hold for your channel? Uh, so 2021, um, I'm going to be celebrating the home cooks of the 60s and 70s, like I said, with those, those contribution cookbooks. Um, I am going to be doing um, series from the 20s. I am I'm actually have a ginormous board over here that you can't see. So I'm kind of looking to see because like I said, I already have uploads through April. Um, but it's just just like a lot of obscure, you know, dishes that you probably have never heard or things that you grew up on. Um, and of course I'm gonna do a Valentine's Day, two episodes, one cocktail, one dish, because right. Valentine's Day is my favorite holiday ever. What's and the dish? Should I tell you? Watch it, Monica. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Chicken Not heart. Drink. Watch. Chicken heart. Monica's no good. I already gave you the secret about you need to yeah. watch the last video of um 2020 because you're going to see my husband making a rare appearance. One secret per show, Monica. Monica it will involve chocolate. A lot of it. And <laughs> actually, it's, it's going to be a very surprising inventor of a cocktail. And I'm going to leave it at that. Out. Two secrets per show. Oh, eh, uh, you know what? Fell. Frangelica and Le um, what is it? Lemon? Yeah, a little lemon wedge. It tastes just like chocolate cake. What is that? It's like just like nineteen twenty eight. Frangelico and lemon. Oh my gosh! Yes, you gotta try it sometime. It's I uh, shall tonight. Yeah, do a little <laughs> shot of Frangelica and then um, and take then a bite of lemon. No uh -huh. shit. And then okay, think, yeah, and then you put like a little bit of sugar on your hand too. And at the same time, oh my God, it tastes just like a chocolate cake. It's so good. Mike, you have the best show co-host ever. Do not ever let her go. She's awesome. I know. I love Monica. <laughs> Speaking of that, there's somebody at the front door. So Monica, it's yours. <laughs> Jill, you've been an gonna, amazing guest. Thank you so much. Yes, it was fun watching really you. Really appreciate it. Yep. Really appreciate you being on. Thank you so much. So much for Yep. Mike, thank you so 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 much. It's um, I, really an honor. Very fascinating. And hurry I'm so happy to be able to talk to you. I cannot wait thank to like you. check out your channel. It's, because I love. Um, I, I just have an Instagram and Facebook. I don't have a channel, but I'm going to subscribe to your channel. But you don't. And, oh, uh, my bad. Let's take it from there. I would I love it. I would love it. I, Come find me and let's chat. I'm doing my chatting. I want to get to know you. Sure. When I have my my um, kitchen put it outside i'll have harita over and and like if you come down i'll have i'll make sure harita comes over and, sure uh, meet and the world is my oyster we'll come visit harita and, and i say goodbye to monica i'm here gone. i'm back monica we're wrapping monica, it up thank know, you so sorry. much it's been so there's just too much <laughs> too much estrogen here for me. Thank you so much, Mike. So Quitter. Much. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you so much, everybody. Honor to be part of all this estrogen. We'll see you.